Hello and welcome to Clay Shooter TV. This month's gun review will be the new Browning B725 Sporter Medallion Silver. Plus, Drennan will be reviewing Laval Express's Supreme Comp cartridges in number eight shot. But first up, let's head off to Simon O'Leary, who will be talking us through how to choose your gun and cartridge combo. So, have you just got a shotgun license? Are you now in the market to go and buy a gun and some, you know, related bits and pieces? What gun do you buy? What cartridge do you choose? Stay tuned as we run through how to make that correct choice. Welcome back to this episode of Clay Shooter TV. So, you've got your golden ticket, you've got your license, you're ready to go shopping, you're new to shooting, what gun do you buy? Wow, what a question. Um, so many different options, uh, mind bending. Uh, let's see if we can break it down so you've got some sort of simple, you know, almost process. We are all very different. Sizes, shapes, strength, so on and so forth. But the good news is there is a gun, and indeed guns, out there for you. So for me, I think the first thing to decide is what type of shooting you're doing. Is it clay, is it game, is it pest control, or is it actually a mix of all three? Um, that's, gonna, that's gonna dictate the type of gun, possibly guns, uh, you might need to purchase. Let's base it on that you're gonna do a little bit of each, and therefore the standard choice would probably be to go for an over and under and a multi-choke. Let's think about calibre and size. For me, it comes down to feel, which uh, I know is a, is a safe word for me because it's got no detail and it's based on the individual. But it is about feel in the sense of weight and balance, okay? Um, don't be misled into thinking small people have small guns and uh, someone my size shoots a cannon. It's not the case. Um, I would have a much shorter stock than somebody who's much lighter and thinner than me, um, but we might still use the same calibre. Um, so, you know, it's not just straight cut, black and white. Um, let's just play along. Just, I'm going to pluck something out of thin air. Let's say we've got a lady who's 25, medium build, and she's about to go out and buy a shotgun. So it might be that that lady doesn't do a lot of sports, isn't particularly strong, and that's not related to being a lady, I'm just talking about the individual. It could be a 410, okay? A 410 is gonna limit you in distance. Um, cartridges, I think, top out at 19 grams, certainly in lead. Um, for simple clay shooting, Sunday mornings, you know, little round in the week, perfect. Um, some might say, you know, one has to be quite skilled with a 410 because, you know, they're a small gun, small pattern, and so on. But they're still a fabulous gun. Um, here at the school, just as a quick sideline, um, we use Yieldit's 410s, which is uh, just a sheer coincidence that they happen to be sponsoring this video. But um, we have always used their 410s, and they are superb guns, very robust, very strong. Um, that said, lady, could also use a 20 bore. Now bearing in mind now, we're coming into a slightly heavier gun, slightly bigger caliber. Um, I'm skipping the 28 bore, just, just for keeping it fluid. <clears throat> um, in a stress position, holding the gun, how does that work? Um, does it feel comfortable? Is it too much of a leap? Uh, now a 20 gauge, I would say, is a gun that you can entertain all things with. Um, but because they're lighter, 
when you start getting to the heavier loads in cartridges, we'll come to that next, you can feel the recoil. Now, if that lady was quite strong, quite fit, um, you know, is comfortable for short periods, holding the gun mounted, which we know is a stress position, she could then possibly go for a 12 gauge, which is a heavier gun, but of course absorbs the recoil. So you can see now how, uh, well, let's say, not difficult, but there are a myriad of choices, which to a degree all fit, but it comes down to feel. So I suppose really what you're looking to get is really good advice. Uh, hopefully you would have had that from your shooting instructor uh, as you've entertained those lessons prior and during your application for a shotgun license. And indeed, you know, talking to a reputable, you know, gun dealer or making friends with your local gun shop, um, you know, and, and, and just understanding, you know, what's on offer and what the differences are. Now, um, I've talked about over and unders. So our sponsors have lended us uh, a couple of guns. Um, this is a yield it's SPZ. So just as an example, this is a 12 bore, 12 gauge. It's really, really light. So actually, um, someone who doesn't want to, you know, a real sort of heavy weight, you know, in that, what is a stress position when the gun's mounted, either pre-mounted or gunned down. You know, this is a cracking little buy. Um, if you started putting game rounds through this, then maybe you might feel it. But if you're someone who's going to do largely clays, you know, maybe the odd foray into the field, you know, something like this could be the perfect purchase. Um, by default as well, these things, uh, you know, are really reasonably priced. So worth, if you're in the market, going on to yield it and having a look at their range and so on and so forth. Um, you know, if budgets are slightly grander, then you can go up to slightly more detailed guns in finish, um, you know, wood engraving. But remember, this is that's a vanity thing. It's not going to make you shoot better. There is also the option of a thing called a semi-auto. Again, when you go into a shop, talk to someone, they can run through, you know, what this is and what it does. Bluntly, that gun is great for clay shooting because it, it further absorbs recoil and it is a lighter gun. Um, it is a gun that's used for pest control. With pest control, you've got that extra shot because a semi will shoot three cartridges, but just so you know, any clay shoot shooting school, you're only allowed to put two cartridges in. You mustn't shoot three, unless it's a specific um, semi-auto competition or shoot. So already we've got four choices there. 410, 20 bore, 12 bore, and then the semi auto. And I'm relating to that as a 12 bore. Um, I'll confuse you even more now. Some of you may have family that already shoot. You've gone to shoots, you know, for, for, or attended shoots for a long time, not actually having shot. But you've seen people using a side by side, and you like the idea of a more traditional gun. Well, again, there's options there, same calibers. Um, the gun fits are slightly different, especially if you go for a traditional gun with a double trigger. Um, but again, going to the right gun shop and talking to the right person, they can highlight those little details and nuances and get a gun that best fits you. So that's off the shelf, one that best fits, gets you started. I love side by sides. I think semi-autos have got their place, cracking guns. I think all guns have got their place, they're fabulous. But I guess if you were starting, irrespective of that small minefield of caliber um, and size, um, I would probably push you towards an over and under, just to get you started. Rather like buying a simple modern car. After that, you can go and buy a vintage or a classic, something that's slightly more involved, um, you know, and, 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 and the sky's the limit. Uh, the other one detail that comes into those guns, a bit of a nuance, um, is the barrel length as well. 
So that will also play a part of weight and indeed balance when holding the gun. So just to recap, lots of different choices. I based it on that 25 year old lady going into a gun shop. Um, collect some advice, speak to a couple of different people, pop into a couple of different shops, ring them up, have a chat, um, have a look online. Uh, if anybody wants to ring us here at Hound Hall um, and ask advice, we'd be more than happy um, uh, you know, to guide you um, in this area um, because it is slightly detailed. The one saving grace, I guess, and uh, the gun companies might not like me for saying this, but I would suggest initially going second hand. Uh, and certainly here at Hound Hall, we've got a set up with our two local gun shops, uh, Rakers and Chichester Armoury, um, who both sell yield its guns amongst others, um, where you can come and you know try them, try before you buy almost. Uh, the one thing to remember as well that when you're in a shop and you're you know holding mounting said gun, it does feel slightly different when you put a couple of cartridges through it, okay? So you, not all shops and places will have that option, but that's something that's unique to us um, here at, um, at Hound Hall. So uh, be clear on what you're gonna do, okay? Clays, game, bit of both, um, pest control. Um, get into a shop, look at some different guns. You'll have a budget in mind and just offer those guns up correctly. Obviously you've had your lessons, got an idea, that weight slightly forward, hold the gun into a mirror if they have one, so you can see everything, and just get a feel for it. And I'm afraid it is, you know, just a feel at that stage. And if you can, get out and try the guns and shoot them. If you can't and you've purchased, I think you build that, that relationship with said shop, um, and I'm sure they'd welcome you back to, uh, you know, exchange or upgrade or move sideways. Um, with a gun, you know, that might be better suited to you. So lots of options. Make friends with your local gun shop. Um, if that wasn't confusing enough, I'm now going to get onto the cartridge subject of cartridges. <laughs> Two minutes. All right, a little bit of shooting there. I've managed to uh, untie my tongue now. <laughs> and uh, we're now gonna talk about cartridges. I know the last bit was a little bit involved on guns. Unfortunately, it really is. Um, but just to quickly recap, it's feel, okay? It's all about feel, but you can always change the gun. You know, it's an ongoing process. So don't feel that that purchase is the only purchase. All right, feel comfortable. Okay. Rattling along with the gun, obviously we've got to balance our cartridges. Now, there's some great brands out there. They all do the same sizes. They all have boxes for specifics, you know, pest control, game, and then that plethora of cartridges for, for clay busting. Um, this show is sponsored by Ely, and in particular, they're superb. I mean, there's a great starting point. Um, let's take clay shooting, all right? Let's just go clay shooting for now. Um, really, you're gonna buzz between seven, seven and a half, eights, and the size of cartridge, well, certainly for competitions, is 28 gram. But for practice, just what I call friendly practice, you can come back to a 24, or indeed you can come back to a 21. We use a 21 gram cartridge in the school in 12 and 20 bore um, for all our lessons and, and sort of training, a nice lightweight load. So, so let's think why. Okay, so I'm gonna take Ely, um, you know, as an example, they're sponsoring the show and they are actually a really nice show. Um, you found your gun, okay? You've picked your gun, you understand why, feel, weight, barrel length, um, general best fit, not a fitted gun. Um, hopefully you'll have a basic understanding of chokes. Um, if you find that a bit of a uh, sort of a minefield, 
just start off with a quarter and a half or a cylinder and quarter, uh, depending on what, what brand of gun you've got and how they mark up their chokes. Again, guidance from the gun shop or indeed the shooting instructor. Um, if you're shooting a 410, you will top out, I think, at 19 gram. But for 20 and 12 bore, um, you've got that 21 gram, you know, sort of entry level weight. And indeed, you've got 24. And indeed, you've got 28. Um, which one do you use? Again, you've got to go out and try them. You'll have had your lessons. You'll have used a certain type of cartridge within the lesson. How did that feel? Uh, well, it was a 21 gram. It was quite comfy. It was through a 20 bore. Nice. Maybe then it's worth going out and buying a box of 24 grams, you know, and trying those um, and seeing how they feel. Um, if you shoot with a friend, friends or group of people, and they're all using different sizes, that's a great opportunity too to find which one works for you or try another brand, size, so on and so forth. Again, it's feel, it's, it's about you and, 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 and stupid as it sounds, the noise of the gun, how it all feels and the results that you get. Now, you can pattern a gun and there's a bit of, you know, sort of some people like and some dislike this, but it's basically shooting a cartridge at a big metal plate. Go to a shooting school, most will have what's called a pattern plate and you can then get a basic understanding of how the cartridge behaves. It is only basic because most of the time your targets will be moving. Uh, well, they'll all be moving, but uh, you know, some will be crossing and quartering. So obviously shooting at a plate, a static plate, just gives you a, you know, sort of a circular pattern rather than a stream that will be created on a moving target. So that opportunity then allows you to see how it behaves through your gun. One brand might be slightly high, another brand in exactly the same size might be straight on, another brand might do something different again. So unfortunately there is no clear answer. Um, it's feel and for some it's price as well. The feel even comes down to the noise. Some cartridges make a cracking sound others make a thud. Um, you'll also feel a difference if you put a cartridge through a semi-auto. That will also lead you to a heavier cartridge. Semi-auto guns don't tend to cycle that well with lighter loads, 21 and 24 grams, but will behave perfectly with, you know, 28 gram upward. So again, it's, it's, it's feel, it's choice, and certainly in the semi-auto area, it's balancing a cartridge that will cycle. Again, this is the sort of advice that really should be given to you when you purchase a gun. You might then buy a couple of different boxes of the same size, work from there, talk to friends, go out shooting, get amongst it, go and try it. Uh, it's the only way, yeah. Um, now, a little side note as well, and I'm going to put this in, this is deviating a little bit from the plan today because the plan today was literally about choices of gun and cartridges. I will just say as a safety, um, 20 ball cartridges are always yellow and they're no other colour, they're just yellow. And that's purely because if you do have two calibre guns or you're with a friend and you're sharing cartridges, a 20 ball cartridge will fall into a 12 gauge and get stuck down in the chamber so it will look like the gun is unloaded. One could then, in the heat of the moment, whack a cartridge in on top not knowing that that 20 bore is wedged below and you can imagine the uh, the effects of that utterly catastrophic but of course that's not going to happen because you're going to be safe, you're going to be focused and these things are bright yellow. Four tens. 28 bore, which I haven't talked about much today, and 12 bore, are in all different colours except yellow. So I just wanted to make that little side note. So again, just to recap, a myriad of choices on all things. Pull as much knowledge, um, Q&A 
from your instructor, from the gun shop. Take time to speak to a few people first. If you can, try these things out. I think it's, it's, it's uh, as detailed as it seems, you know, oh, what choices do I make? When you shoot a gun that doesn't fit or is too heavy or a cartridge that's too pokey, you'll know straight away. So it will be very clear as to what you shouldn't have. Um, you've just got to get into it, you know, and get, get, get uh, involved, okay? But always with this, when you are shooting the gun, keep that stance nice, keep that weight on the front foot. Remember that stock coming into the cheek and the shoulder. Take time to get set up properly. Okay, rushing, thrashing around, it's gonna give a misreading. And largely, if the stock's in the wrong place, um, you know, even a light load in the gun can cause bruising and a bit of discomfort, okay? So there you go, a little overview on cartridges. It is a big subject and I find myself probably waffling a little bit, so forgive me. Um, if you wanna put questions underneath, please do, and I will answer them. It may take me a couple of weeks, but I will answer them, okay? Um, and certainly if you're in the vicinity of Hound Hall here in West Sussex, um, happy to see people coming in, you know, and trying out different options, um, loads, guns, and indeed we've got a patent plate here too. Um, so please drop a line and give us a call. Um, as ever, thanks for watching. I will do my best to answer those questions. I think me and Adam are going to go off and do a little bit of shooting now, um, but we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Clay Shooter TV. From breaking targets to breaking stories, you're now watching Clay Shooter TV News. Skeet shooting superstars Amber Rutter and Ben Llewellyn bagged bronze in the mixed team skeet event at the ISSF World Championship in Azerbaijan. This result came in just a little too late to make it into last episode's roundup, so a huge well done from us for another world-class performance. The Yorkshire Shooting Show returns to Doncaster Racecourse on the 23rd and 24th of September. This indoor and outdoor show will be packed with money-saving deals and the latest product launches, along with all the fun attractions you would expect from a country fair. Why not take the whole family down and have a great day out? Ian Coley Sporting has now completed work on the new section of its sporting course, so why not head down to the Gloucestershire ground and try it out? There is also a fantastic gun shop with a huge selection of brands, both new and second-hand. And check out last month's episode of Clay Shooter TV for a review of a beautiful second-hand Kriegoff from Ian Coley. And lastly, there is still time to grab your copy of the complete guide to clay shooting, created by the team here at Clay Shooter TV. The guide is packed with everything you need to know about clay shooting in 2023, including a guide to the best grounds in the country, a huge gear and gun section, and technique advice from some of the biggest names in the business. Get your copy via the link below the video. And now stay tuned for Drennan's gun and cartridge reviews. So today, we're going to be reviewing the B725 Medallion Silver. Now, I did do a small review of this at the shooting show earlier this year. Well, Brandon now have sent it to me to try. So I'm going to go through a few features before I take it out there and show you what it's like to shoot. We'll start off with, it comes in a 30 or 32 inch. It's got a 10 mil parallel rib, no tapered, centre bead, multi-choke actually comes with eight chokes and it goes from extra full all the way down to cylinder so there's enough in there for everybody what else has it got on the barrels well double ventilated so we've got a top ventilated rib 
Centre ventilated, so it's absolutely perfect if you do a lot of shooting like me and you need it to vent off and cool itself down. Schnabel style forend, quite slim this actually. There's not a trap forend and it's not a sporting forend. It's a bit of, well, it's just a nice slim down Schnabel-y kind of forend. And it's very nice and it's very slim in the hand. Ideal if you like that kind of fit. Let's move him back to the action. I'm going to come on to the action a little bit later on because this is... A silver inlaid action and you'll see some close-ups of this in a minute and it is absolutely stunning it really is very beautiful and pretty what Brandon have done and they've only made about 150 of them I think they're coming to the UK so they're rare if you can get one and if you can get get it so as I said 30 inch or 32 inch on the barrels and they're all multi-choke Moving down to the tr uh, trigger, it's got a three position trigger for adjusting your length of grip. So if you've got long fingers, push the trigger forward. If you've got short fingers, you pull it back. Easy peasy, lemon and squeezy. Onto the stock, this is a Turkish grade four walnut stock. And it's not bad. And it comes with an adjustable cane. Um, and it's really easy to set actually. But I'm going to tell you a bit later on in the pluses and the minuses because there's some pluses and minuses about that but I'll tell you a little bit about that later on. So yeah, you can adjust the height if you want a bit uh, up more upright like our eye shoot. You can cast it whether you're left-handed or right-handed which then brings me to the pistol grip. The grip, it's not a full tight radius grip. It's, it's, got, a, it's got a slight palm swell in it. And the checkering is lovely. And I do like this about brownings. Browning tend to put checker in and then go broad enough long enough wide enough so you actually can get your mitts on it which is exactly what they've done on the forend and the stock here lovely paneling it grips fantastic in the hand and it looks really neat and tidy as they always do to be quite honest the usual recoil pad now you can get these in different sizes as well so if you need to alter the length of pull you can get one a little bit longer if you need it, or you can get a short one like this. So that's pretty much it. But what's it really like to shoot? Well, we're going to find out right now, and I'll see you on a stand. I'm going to start off as I always do. You've seen me do this many times. I'm going to start with some 21, 24, 28, and uh, you'll get to see how this shoots. So watch this space.
So, what's my conclusion of Browning's B725 Medallion Silver Edition? You get a lot of gun for your money, I'll be honest. Is it a perfect gun? Not quite, and I'm going to say that there is a negative about this gun, and it's the adjustable comb. Why is it a negative? It's just a little bit on the flimsy side. And I will say, if you do happen to have one of these, and you do adjust it, I would suggest you buy some washers and fill in the gap there. It is just a little bit on the flimsy side. However, it's probably the easiest one in the world you've ever come across to change. That's pretty much the negatives over. What's it like to shoot? It's a very easy gun to shoot, as all Brownings are. They're just very forgiving. They just do the job. And they're nice to shoot. How have I found it to shoot? We shot some long stuff. We shot some close stuff. We shot some hard stuff. We shot some easy stuff. Droppers, loopers, driven, crossers, going away. And it did it with a breeze. It really did. And you've got to take it after Browning for what they've done here. I mean, they've made an absolutely stunning looking piece of kit here. I mean, the engraving, the silver uh, embossing is just absolutely stunning. And as with Browning, you get your 10 year warranty, three year with the wood. And it comes with a host of accessories. I mean, in here we've got barrel weights. Oh, sorry, stock weights. Barrel weights. Allen kit, more Allen keys you can get in B and Q, to be honest. Eight DS chokes, which are just absolutely, there's everything in there, and I've mentioned that already. As it comes to the safety, and you've seen this on all my videos, safety's gonna make a really nice gun. And this has typical browning, lovely quality. You can select each barrel nicely. It's a three inch chambered gun. It's flirty lead, so it'll take high performance shells. So if you're somebody like myself who does a lot of clay shooting, but occasionally is out in the field and you want to take it in the field, you can. What's it capable of doing? Certainly it can absolutely grind clays to bits. The video is going to prove that. And we shot. BMP through it, Ely, Fiocchi, Lyle Vale, uh, Cellular and Bellet. So we shot a host of ammo from 21 gram all the way up to 28 gram, and it handled it no problem, especially with it being a manual trigger in there. So there's no inertia on this. If we've got to tell you after what Brandon have done, I've enjoyed shooting it. I think if you can actually get one, because these are going to fly out from your dealer. It's a really good, valued gun. Just over £5,000, I think. And look at it. You tell me another gun that came out in 2023 at that price that looks as nice as that. I don't think you can. I don't know one. I really don't. So there you go. The silver medallion from Browning. It's an absolute gem to shoot. And I am going to be sorry it's going. And on that note, I'll see you again. So today, I'm going to be reviewing Laval Express's Supreme Comp. This is Express's flagship cartridge. And I can understand why when you see how many titles it's got. Which I'll tell you how many it's got after. We're going to be shooting the 8. And particularly the 8. 8 only. Although they do make them in 6.5, a 7, a 7.5, 8, 9, and I think it might even be 9.5. But anyway. All the shot in all the Supreme range is super tempered shot. So it's the best shot you can get. The engine in here is a D20 powder. The wad, made by the best manufacturer in the world for making cartridge components, is Bashiri Pellegri, or BMP as I say it over here because I've probably got the name wrong. 25mm case, so the ejection that it, causes, that it creates is fantastic, they eject perfectly whether it's over and under, side by side, semi-autos, solid black and always um, the writing is always in gold, but it looks absolutely ace. But what does it shoot like? Well, I know how Richard shoots them, but how does it shoot for somebody like me and somebody like you? Well, we're going to find out and I'll see you in the next piece.
So what's my conclusion and opinion of Blavel Express is Supreme? Well, I'll mention his name again. Richard Foles, MBE. Just this year that I can just recall, he's just won the uh, World Super Sporting, um, the British Open Ski, using the Supremes. I actually use this for Helice as well in the number seven, but we've shot the Sporting here today in Oak Edge in an eight. You'll see from the footage that I've shot some clays today. The other side of the cage, so much further back than where your club shooter's going to shoot them. We've shot them at long range, we've shot them at short range, we've shot them at slow targets, we've shot them at fast targets, and it's absolutely annihilated everything when I put the gun in the right place, which has been most of the time. It is a shell that has got, what I call, it's got a crisp go to it. It's very crispy, but without that recoil that you get from some cartridges, crispy, bang, lots of recoil, you're all over the place. No, it doesn't do that. You fire it, it's got a lovely return of recoil from it. The way that it does it, very rounded. And the speed of it, which I think is 1475 feet per second. So in other words, well, as you put your lead in, or whatever you're doing, where you're shooting at it, when you pull that trigger, that clay has broken. And as I said, you'll see from the footage, we've shot some targets today, 60 meters out, and it's absolutely destroyed it. So when Richard says he uses a six and R's for targets that are a lot harder than 60 meters out, you can just see how good these are. And that's in a number eight. If you can afford them, there's no doubt about it, this is probably, well it is actually, in the top 10 best cartridges I've ever shot in my life. And I've shot all the way around the world. Would I shoot these? Well, I happen to anyway. So if I'm shooting a competition, this is what I go to. But don't take my word for it. Take the word of an Olympic champion, world champion, European champion, British champion, and an English champion. And on that note, I'll see you again. That's all we've got time for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss a show. And we'll see you next month with more great content made just for clay shooters.